Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 41 of Screw the Commute podcast. I got Pete Anderson here, and this is a guy who's actually saved my life. You're going to hear about him in a moment. And I hope you didn't miss episode 40. That's my weekly Monday training session where I told you all about Craigslist and buying apps and how they help your business. Not only getting cheap equipment and supplies, but I don't hire anybody unless they're on Craigslist. So I hope you heard that one, episode 40. Our sponsor is kickstartcart.com, the shopping cart system I've been using and promoting for 16 years because... Mere mortals can operate it. We give unlimited free one-on-one tutoring. Nobody does that on the card to get you up and running and to help you figure things out fast. So get your 30-day free trial at kickstartcart.com. We'll have that in the show notes. Plus, I covered shopping carts in episode 10 in case you want to go back and listen to that. Now let's get on to the main event. Dr. Pete Anderson is regarded as one of the best swimming instructors in the world. His brand, Teach Yourself to Swim, is a system of easy-to-master, one-minute steps regarded as the new science of swimming. His illustrated book and pro demonstrations DVD video packages have been sold to over seven countries and all over the United States, and he didn't put this in his introduction, but he's got enough gold medals in senior Olympics. If you melted them down, you could finance a small country, right? So, so Pete, are you ready to screw (laughs) the commute, the commute, man? Of course. Hey, tell everybody what what you've been doing. Well, I teach people how to teach themselves and their children how to swim using their, well, starting at home with even without a pool. And I use a kitchen sink, a dressing mirror, mattress, and a bathtub. And they think I'm nuts because, well, I, gotta go. <laughs> I don't think I could fit. You know, I've been through your system, but a lot of people are thinking, well, how would you fit a person into a sink? <laughs> well, I just use the face, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, uh, okay. Through this process, I've learned that there's so many instructors that are so poor that uh, I, I've created a book and a video that's all illustrated. And, of course, I'm the pro demonstrator, not some uh, high school kid that's not a very good swimmer. And, and the the sad part about this whole thing is that I've learned that the people who teach the people to teach swimming are not very good swimmers and they've never been certified teachers. And that's been the other problem that I wanted to solve. And uh, so I've sold my books and videos now and packages to over seven countries and um, you know, all over the United States. And, uh, but the whole idea is to teach people how to teach themselves. It saves them money because everybody in the family gets to share it. And a lot of time and frustration because parents have remarked how, well, oh my gosh, I got to schedule my kid along with soccer and everything else to go to the swim um, lesson. And uh, it's a problem for them. Uh, yeah, some places there's no pools at all to be had. And then also you got winter with, even if there was a pool, it's not open in the winter in the cold parts of the United States. But give them a little bit of a, you know, I, I mentioned about the gold medals, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you are a beast in the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are a beast in the water. So tell them a little bit about your credentials. And um, so not only are you great at swimming, you have a lot of teaching abilities that these young people have no clue about on how to teach things. So give them both sides of that coin. Well, when I talk to people, I usually insert this kind of a little um, uh, statement. I say, well, okay, the humorous part of this is that I'm not like a man telling a woman how to have a baby. I'm still doing this stuff. And, and, right. and so I always get a good laugh from that. I found that if you get people relaxed and, and happy, uh, they're more willing to talk to you. Also, I found if you, uh, if you give them a little bit of praise, like, boy, you've got a beautiful child there, or whatever, they'll, they'll have their ears open and they'll listen and pay attention to you. But if you, if you criticize them, you're not teaching your kid right. Well, they shut you down immediately. They don't care who you are, or what your credentials are. And uh, so that's a big, important point I've learned. But so, but anyway, I, uh, I was a five-time All-American at Indiana University where Mark Spitz swam. And uh, when I started setting all these records and winning all these gold medals in the Summer Senior Olympic Games Championships, they started calling me the Michael Phelps of Senior Olympics. And I, well, I, I kind of was <laughs> shy for that. I didn't, didn't think that was appropriate. But 
I have won uh, uh, and set world records and national uh, marks in uh, United States master swimming. And uh, part of that problem was when I got started in swimming was that, um, well, let's, let me go back to Indiana University. When I was at Indiana, um, my coach was the 1964 and 1976 U.S. men's Olympic swimming coach, uh, the team coach. And um, on our team alone at Indiana, when I swam these dual meets, was Chet Dostremski, who was the world record holder in the breaststroke events that I swam in. And if he wasn't there, Kenny Nakasone from Hawaii wasn't going to be the world record holder. So, hell, I kept <laughs> placing third all the time. It pissed me off. So um, <laughs> then when master swimming came up and I stopped coaching, I was like 56 years old, I think. I decided that, well, you know, hey, I could go win a national title. I was never able to do that because Chet and Kenny were in the way. So I won my first national title, I think, when I was 56. And it, and it took me another five or six years to set a world record in the 50-meter breaststroke long course in, uh, at Rutgers, I think it was. And uh, from then on, I, I started entering the Senior Olympic Championships and started winning a lot of gold medals in that, too. So I'm setting records. But um, I did it for my health. You're working on yes, one I'm now, right? This summer, I've aged up. Believe it or not, I'm going to be in the 75. I'll be 75 in October. So I'll be in the 75 to 79 age group. And I'm going for the world record in the 50-meter uh, breaststroke long course. And then I'll call short course when this season's over. It'll start up in September. But, uh, yeah, I go to Orlando July 28th through August 4th for a big meet. I hope to be in the top three in all my events. Yeah, it's, they may have heard this by then or not heard this by then probably uh it'll probably be over by then and maybe we can do an update in the show notes on how you did so anyway so you're a killer swimmer to start with and then you have educational experience on proper teaching yeah, yes absolutely right? uh, it, with my coach being so good I, I spent my bachelor's and master's in health and physical education at indiana so i was mentored by one of the world's greatest well if not the greatest swimming coach of all time so then i came out of that who was that that was Doc Councilman, James Doc, James Councilman. Doc Councilman. He's and uh, you're a PhD now too yourself. Right? Yes, I came out and started to coach and teach for four years, and I went back to uh, the University of Toledo for my PhD, and I, I specialized in perceptual motor learning and sports psychology, which essentially is the psychology of learning principles, which no other instructor I've found anywhere in the world knows about. So I teach people a whole lot faster than other people because my methods and cues, having been a swimmer, I know what the right kinesthetic cues are to feel the water pressure, to pull down the water and move your body over the water efficiently. But even in my book, the one thing I advocate more than anything is that you float first, swim second. The problem I've had with uh, instructors is that they, uh, they want to show mom up there in the stands that, look, your kids see your kids kicking and stroking and, and they're swimming. <laughs> Well, but the problem they're is doing a lot of splashing. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they're doing. <laughs> well, and the other problem with that, Tom, is that the the child gets the mindset that hell, if I don't move my arms and legs really fast, I'm going to sink and I'm going to drown, and that's the absolute worst thing you can you can put in anybody's mind. So I always emphasize floating, and um, first. And you had me doing it, but uh, tell them the. Uh, I mean, we yeah, we definitely want to talk about business today, but this is so important. This is a life or death issue. This isn't. Uh, make a little extra money issue. This is your child or you. You know, I was 60 years old before I got a hold of Pete and, and he got me swimming. <clears throat> you know, so I was at risk my whole life or, or at risk and avoiding places. You know, I couldn't enjoy going boating. I actually wore two life jackets one time in case one <laughs> malfunctioned. <laughs> that's the truth. That's the absolute truth. And uh, so this is a uh, a life or death thing, but tell them about the guy that wanted to go in the Navy. Oh, wow. I'm Occasionally I relent and because I, I teach people how to teach themselves with my books and DVDs, of course, and I'm the demonstrator on their TV or their iPad or whatever they take to the pool or the shallow end of a lake. I don't care. But, uh, this guy came to me and, and I sometimes relent and will break down and I'll teach a lesson in person. And uh, here in San Diego, of course, we have the Navy base and this guy calls me up and I always ask the adult, uh, why do you want to take, why do you want to learn to swim now? I mean, I, I asked that of you too. And yeah. Because you were, you were older, you were in your 60s. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. okay, well, I don't care about what, what, what's your why? Why do you want to do this? Because my attitude in the back of my mind is that people need to know how to swim because it's the only sport in the world that'll teach you enough to help potentially save your life, as you've mentioned. But the other part of this is that you have more relaxation and family fun times with your family, knowing that they're safe and secure. So anyway, I asked this guy and he tells me, because I said, he said, well, I can't float. 
And I said, well, or why do you want to learn to swim? He said, well, because I think I really need to. And because I've, I've signed up to go in the Navy at the end of September. <laughs> and I said, dude, these ships go out in the open ocean and open water and it's like 10, 20, 30,000 feet deep. <laughs> he said, well, I can learn. And I said, well, in my first session with him, I had him swimming 50 feet. Uh, at first, I, had him taught, I taught him how to float. And, uh, and then he had a grin from ear to ear and Tom, you can't pay me enough to see that. I mean, that's why I do it. It's not for the money. And his wife's standing on the side, just almost ready to fall in Her because she's dropped. never seen him yeah. do this. Yeah. And, and he was from West Africa. I mean, so, you know, he, he got out of um, Niger about 10 or 12 years ago, got over to England then came here and got married and you now they have a little boy and, and, uh, but just a great guy. And, um, but uh, yeah, in the first 45 minutes, I had him swimming 50 feet. Now with not a breath, then the second lesson, I taught him how to breathe and things. And of course, now on the fourth lesson, I've taught him how to do breaststroke, which is kind of complex. But my system of easy to master one minute steps, unless you have an IQ under 80, anyone can do this. <laughs> Anybody can do this. Yeah, it's called a room temperature IQ. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, uh, but I, yeah, and so it is a little, you know, strange to people because you were teaching me to work on my breath in the sink and uh, how I keep my mouth open and all these things. So we can't get into them today, but these are the, the things that I was able to do on my own and practice so that when I got into the pool, which you know, when you haven't uh, been a swimmer for 60 years, that's a, you know, ten intense environment when you're in a pool. <laughs> you know, so, so I got to learn outside of the pool so that when I got into the pool, I wasn't so freaked out. So, so that was just my impression of it, but, uh, but you've had jobs in the past, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, I, I had some hard lessons to learn through years of doing that for about 40 years. And, um, but I, essentially I was a teacher and a director of aquatics for large aquatic programs from, well, I used to manage these eight lane, 50 meter pools with towers and, you know, three meter boards and the whole thing. And then of course was able to coach and I've coached collegiate all American women at a university and. And um, my high school boys team in 79 and 80 were ranked fifth in the nation. So, uh, but I learned all these things. So the physics, like I said, from my coach and, and um, being mentored by him. And, 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 I, and I love people. And um, uh, I was able to motivate the kids to do well. Right. But you actually were a superintendent of schools oh, and yeah. retired from that now, right? So yeah. tell us about the transition from, you know, being, a, getting a paycheck, going to work for a school district, and then. Now you're an entrepreneur. How was that transition time for you? Oh, what was it I, like? I, the only thing I, re, I, <laughs> I the only thing I regret is that I didn't do it like 20 years sooner. <laughs> That's the, the truth of it all. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I from 1980 to 2000, I got out of uh, education. I went into medical sales, and I learned some valuable lessons there because I was in the business world, and uh, which many of your listeners are probably in that in that world. And uh, I learned some valuable, really valuable lessons there, but ultimately then realized I wouldn't have much retirement plan by staying in that. But I thought I would make more money in, in, med in medical sales. But the fact is that there's so much of a, a morass of um, politics and things that was worse than even in the educational system. So I went back to school and got my endorsement to be a principal, and then they became a school superintendent. That was pretty rigorous. But uh, it was worth it because it's given me a retirement plan from the teacher retirement system in Illinois. Mm -hmm. That's it's helping me to uh, fund what I do now to help more people. But uh, yeah, it's um, the school board I had. Gosh, I, you know, probably don't want to get into too much detail, but I only had one member with a college degree. It was in Southern Illinois, mostly a farming community, small district, and it was just different. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't pleasurable. <laughs> Yeah. So when you retired, yeah. how long was it before you started oh. uh, your business and creating these swimming products and all that? Oh, it was even before I retired. I, I was starting to do this uh, a little bit on the side so that I could kind of sample the market and see what right. I really okay. wanted. I think that was key. But again, you know, I had some free time on that, which most people do in any kind of position they have. The real key was to me, I retired in uh, July 1 in 2008. And then what happened is that following August, a month later, there were six African-American teenagers who should have known better, but didn't even know how to do a human chain. They all drowned going after one another, trying to save each other in a river. And I've since found where the article was and what happened. 
And it, it just it moved me so much to tears that I sat because I had six kids at the time and nine grandkids. Mm-hmm. And I sat in a chair and I cried for about 20 minutes. And then I thought, God blessed me with so many, so much knowledge and skills that why the heck haven't I written a book and teach these people how to do it, especially in rural areas where there's no pool, as you mentioned. Right. Or, or even then, if there's a pool, you know, someone's up picking an extra paycheck to go on a cruise next, next spring. They, they don't really care if you teach correctly. They don't even have teaching degrees. They don't know teaching methods. And they're teaching people how to teach swimming. It just drove me nuts. So I, um, I created this curriculum of the, all the strokes and um, put it together and, and then did a filming thing. And I spent about 30 grand of my own money to do this. Tell them about the, the things that you have to offer p- people if they have kids or grandchildren or if they, as adults, want to learn how to swim. Uh, what are the things you have and where do we uh, find them? Well, the easiest part is to go to my website, learn to some program.com. There's a, a menu bar up there that you can shop and there's all kinds of things. I've repurposed my book into items that cost $10 or less. But the big one is a four DVD set of all the strokes. It's seven hours and 21 minutes of viewing time. And people can teach themselves and learn at their own pace. So if you've got multiple kids, I, I talked to a mom the other day. Oh, yeah. You she, told me about that. She spent how much money? She spent $400 for one of her children just to learn how to blow bubbles. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I, I, said, I don't want to laugh because, I mean, that's that's really sad, really. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. But, you know, this is what's happening. And, um, and, and they have to keep going back for more and more lessons. Whereas in my videos, you just plug the thing into your DVD player or your iPad or whatever, and um, you take it to the pool and... You, you practice the lessons in these easy to master one minute steps. I mean, you don't learn the whole curriculum in, in one hour. But I mean, you had stuff even working on a bed, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. You can do one arm freestyle on the side of a mattress and then turn around, do the other arm. You can learn to hold your breath for 20 seconds in your kitchen sink. And the joke about that was I'd tell people that they're still fearful of that. I said, come on, you're not an elephant. You're not going to suck water up your hose. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you've got both feet on the floor of your kitchen sink. See, one of my teaching methods is mind control. And if you've got control of your mind, then your body will follow. But if it's the other way around where you're tense and you're nervous, you can't move to the next step. It's called mastery learning. And uh, again, my, teach, my six unique teaching methods are no, one, no one's doing these. And that's why I get much faster, longer lasting results by helping people to learn how to teach themselves using my methods and me demonstrating. And then they just copy what I do. So I'm the model. But uh, Okay, so what's the what's the the thing you like best about now working for yourself and what's the worst part? Oh, the best part is that I, I get to manage my time better. I, I mean, like this morning, I'm going to go kayaking with my wife. Um, I can go boogie boarding because I live in San Diego. I can go boogie boarding when, and even if I wear a wetsuit, I've done it in February here. So it's um, uh, there's always something good to do around water that I'm, I'm just kind of my gills would dry up if I wasn't in the water. Right. <laughs> and so um, and, I, and I swim for my health pretty much, too. Uh, I know that I can swim in my 70s, 80s and 90s by having good strokes and mechanics. And in fact, this Friday, I've got another lesson scheduled for a guy that's 63 and he says he knows how to swim, but he wants to be able to swim laps and be more health and be healthier by doing that. And I saw so I relented and I'm going to go up to a town just about a half an hour north of me here to do that. But um, no, the, the the best part about this is that I see a grin on their face when they get it. And I know I'm helping people because I'm getting so much good feedback from people who said, wow. I, and, and and I have them call me because they're part of my family. Anybody that buys a product from me, they can call me. Now, I say, wait till after seven o'clock my time in San Diego. Don't <laughs> call right. me at nine in the morning in, in the <laughs> East Coast. And um, All right. So what's the worst part about working for yourself? Well, the worst part is that if you don't work, you don't eat, and, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and of course, sometimes, you know, well, I've never gotten a bad review. I mean, I've always had five-star reviews, but yeah, it's, it gets to be a grind sometimes, especially when you're retired because you, you, you know, it's, it's not like you're going to live forever. Every day is a blessing to me. I get up and I see the sun come up and take a deep breath and wow, I'm, I'm blessed to have lived already 75 years. Well, I'm thinking something that's that's bad that frustrates you because I've heard you talk about it, where you're swimming somewhere, maybe in the ocean or a lake or something, and a lifeguard that's like oh. two years old tells you, get out of there because of something, and you know he's absolutely wrong. You remember that. And you, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, I was at my wife's uh, family reunion up in northern Indiana, swimming in Lake Michigan, and these waves were really moderate compared to what we get here in San Diego. And um, uh, and he didn't understand what a rip current is. They call it a, a rip tide, which is wrong. They call it a rip everything, you know, and just uh, – <laughs> and so these waves were about two and a half feet high, and I was going to go body surf. I didn't have my boogie board with me. And uh, it was going to be great. I had my tank suit on, my goggles. I was just going to have a ball. And I started to wade into the water, and I got all these whistles and a couple lifeguards are <laughs> waving me out of the water. And I said, what? Why? He said, oh, sir, we have a, a very dangerous rip current here today. I said, no, no, you don't. I said, this is a little bit of an undertow. It's not going to take you all the way to the northern climbs of, of Michigan. And, um, and he said, no, 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 we've had a couple of drownings here all summer. I said, what? How could you? I said, you're in three feet of water. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. Well, anyway, so I didn't get to enjoy what I did. And that's been my argument is that there are so many people do one stupid thing and then everybody has to suffer and, and because they can't, they, they lock it down. I mean, look at the pools. They've taken away the three meter boards. Now it's uh, the insurance companies just think it's a risk. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I just think that we're, we're cutting things down. We're losing our freedoms. And I didn't like that. All right. So we've got to take a quick break for our sponsor and then we'll be back and tell us what a a typical day is like for you and how you stay motivated. But I got a call from a lady who was paying $4,000 a month for a part-time person to operate her shopping cart system. And she wasn't even using half of what it could do. And that's in addition to the three to $400 a month she's paying for the system. Well, that's highway robbery. She got sucked into a big company, aggressively marketing to people that don't know any better. And she got taken for a ride. So the system I promote, kickstartcart.com, costs a third of the price. And with our unlimited one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you'll be able to easily operate it yourself. So get your 30-day free trial at kickstartcart.com. And then also check out episode 10, where I went all in-depth about what a good shopping cart system should do. All right, we're back with Dr. Pete who saved my life by teaching me how to swim and save myself and float and things like that. So I'm always indebted to him for that. Tell us what a typical day is for you business-wise and how you stay motivated. Well, well, Tom, I tell you, that's an easy one. I, because, you know, when you're retired, you can do anything whenever, whenever you want. It's a, you can just set your own schedule, but it's tough to stay into a routine and uh, because there's so many uh, distractions when you're retired because you've got a, <laughs> in my case, I have a social security income and I've got a retirement income from the state of Illinois for, as a teacher. But, uh, what I like to do is I like to get up around six 30. I, I don't, I'm not, my wife goes to bed at nine. I, I can't go to bed then I'd wake up at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's my thumbs. With me too. So I, I go to bed around 11. I get up around six, six 30. I have seven, seven and a half hours of sleep. And then I splash water in my face to wake up. But now, because of my, my training routine, I'll do 70 half push-ups, or well, one-third of the way down, because I'm a sprinter. And then I turn on my back, and I do two sets of 70 scrunches, just stomach curls. And then I get on the 1700 gym, and, and I do uh, three sets of 20, second notch from the top, and to build up my lat strength. But then I'll, I'll, I'll make up a, a cup of coffee and eat a leisurely breakfast watching the news. And about 8 o'clock, uh, but again, the beauty of this, I don't ever wear a coat and tie anymore. I, that's done. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to do interviews in my underwear, you know, or anything like that, like some guys. <laughs> no, so, Speedos. Yeah. yeah, my Speedo. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I. Well, they I, call those uh, pickle, pickle knockers. Pouch. Or yeah, pickle, pickle pouch. pouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my grandkids are embarrassed when I wear a Speedo to, to go yeah. body surfing or boogie. Board. But you can do it, though, because you've kept in shape all these years. Yeah, I don't have that big overhang that some big guys <laughs> with a gut have. No, I, I, I that's like, called, uh, you know what that's called? That's called Dunlap Dun, disease. Dunlap syndrome. You know, yeah. My, my belly Dunlap over my belt. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes. Well, so I, I, at eight o'clock, I like to check my emails in case I've gotten any orders in things like that, that I need to fill and, you know, box up and send out and things like that. Um, but then, um, uh, I check my emails, but then I don't, I don't spend a lot of time on social media like Facebook and LinkedIn. Maybe I should. Because uh, you can market with them if you've got a decent list. And I've got. Well, you're going to save more lives. As soon as I tell you that, I know you're going to do it more because that's you're dedicated to that. Right. And and I have 500 plus on, on each of those. And um, so I'm, I'm kind of a, a good marketer with that. But um, 
But then I think, uh, and I think it was one of your programs. I learned how to post boards on Pinterest, and that's mm-hmm. where the, let's face it, moms make the decision about learning to swim for their children. They want to protect them. The dads are off working, so I, I'm posting more boards on on Pinterest because that lasts for more than just a, a Google ad that costs you a lot of money. So I, I learned a great tip from you. And um, well, yeah, Pinterest. We found that it's eighty percent women, and they spend way more money per person than than uh, all the other social media. So Pinterest is a great place for uh, marketers, for sure. You know, Tom, I want to interject something here too, though. You know, you've been a good friend for, gosh, over a, a decade. And I tell you what, I couldn't be in this chair doing what I'm doing now if it weren't for your help. You know, I've learned so much from you. You've been my mentor, a great friend. And I tell you, everything you've told me is like... <laughs> Gold, 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 <laughs> well, not platinum. Well, I, I'd say we're equal since you saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, and, uh, you know, so there's so many things that you've told me how to do and, and I'm trying to do. And, uh, and of course, I'm not as good at it as you are, but I'm still trying and uh, busting my chops to do that. Well, yeah. And a lot of people, I mean, when they get retired, they just go straight downhill. I mean, you've got but nothing but improved since you've enti- retired. Well, again, thanks to your help. And, and prodding, I will tell you that. You, you're a good prodder. <laughs> Everything you say just makes sense. And, um, uh, and and you have a wonderful way of motivating people in a kind way. And, and it's it's been helpful to me. Well, we're really uh, thrilled about the work you're doing. You're going to save a lot of lives. And uh, we encourage people to, to go after this. Because some of the old school uh, swimming traditions are so antiquated and so poorly run. And... You know, you got a 15-year-old kid that can barely swim teaching your children at some of these big institutions. And uh, we need pressure to change that because it's it's a new world out there, and you need these kids need to know how to swim. In fact, I, uh, when one of my employees has a baby or something, I say, you get that child in the pool as fast as possible. I don't want them to end up like me at 60 years old deathly afraid to walk near a, a body of water so but again you can't have somebody that doesn't know what they're doing teaching your kids you know? well and tom i'd like to interject something there too mm-hmm. a lot of parents think that uh, they have to wait till their kid can verbalize stand up walk talk you know run the run the bases on a baseball field but it, the actual reality of it is the brain is designed to protect you at all costs it's a microprocessor and after 18 months the brain starts to think too much but up to 18 months, and I, so I tell moms, the best time to teach your child to swim is starting at home using the kitchen sink, this mattress, and bathtub. I taught my, I have triplet boys that are 46 years old now, but they all learn in the bathtub. And they say, wow. I said, so two to 18 months old, that's the time you start doing the freestyle, the kicking on the mattress and all that stuff. The only- yeah, and there's no fear at that point. Oh, absolutely. You know, so you can be relaxed because yeah. one of the biggest things from my perspective which is a pitiful perspective, but it's, it's more accurate because I'm the one that's lived through that fear. I'm the one that's, you know, you get me in water over my head, I, I go into a tense, yeah. you know, one hunk of tense muscle that's going to drop right to the bottom. And after 60 years, it's hard to break those habits. But when they're, they have no fear, they have no reason to be tense, that's the perfect time to get them like little fish in there. Well, and that's exactly what I did with you. I, I recognized that problem immediately. And that's why one of my teaching methods is mind control. Because mm-hmm. if you're standing in your kitchen sink and you're tense, you don't get to move to the next step. You've got to learn to open your mouth and keep your mouth open without blowing bubbles or inhaling, certainly. But you see kids riding tricycles underwater, giggling and laughing. You know, and their mouths are always open. <laughs> Because you make a better airlock with your nose. You don't get that water sniffling up your nose, which tells the, the brain to the little hairs in your nose. Even a three-month-old has that. You're an idiot. You're trying to drown me. Get my computer up out of the water. And so the more <laughs> your head goes up, the feet go down, then you go down. It's it's sad. But See, uh, the, the only problem I had is I, I, uh, I made the mistake to, uh, you said, stand in front of the kitchen sink with your mouth open. And I thought it was the refrigerator. <laughs> So, <laughs> so no, I gained a lot of weight until I reread that. <laughs> so, so anyway, thanks so much for visiting with us. And uh, we know you're doing great work out there. Everybody check the show notes to, uh, to find the contact for uh, Dr. Pete. 
and uh, check out his products. It'll, you know, it'll, first of all, just from a economic point of view, it'll save you loads of money, uh, you know, 400 bucks to learn how to blow bubbles. I mean, I, for 250, I'd teach you how to blow bubbles. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so save yourself a lot of money and learn the new science of this by going to the show notes and checking out all Dr. Pete's products. So thanks so much for visiting with us, Dr. Pete. Please subscribe, everybody, and yeah, any closing comments for the folks? Yeah, Tom, one of the things that I do, because uh, you taught me this, it's an ethical bribe, but but import, importantly, though, there's an 88-page ebook that they can download. Oh, good. And uh, and my website, if they just subscribe to it, and of course, I'll capture their email, and I'll try to sell them the whole set, the four-DVD set, of course, but it's learntosomeprogram.com, and scroll down the page, and then subscribe to get that free ebook. And if they're going to print anything out, I suggest they only print out the last four chapters to save some printer ink. But there I have the pictures of sequences illustrating how to do each of the steps. That And there's 29 easy-to-master steps at home without a pool. Then, of mm -hmm. course, you take and, take and transfer the same identical familiar elements to the shallow end of a pool or lake where you can stand up. But, no, it's been a joy. Uh, you, you're just a great guy. And, um, gosh, I, I, love, I love what you do, and uh, you're helping people. And um, that's what I'm all about, too. That's for sure. So everybody, uh, check out, uh, re-listen to this. If you want to hear a lot of uh, Dr. Pete's tips, check out the show notes. And please subscribe and leave us a review. And we'll catch you on the next episode.